What is going on, YouTube? It is your boy, Mr. Dada Baboon, back with a, another reaction video. This time we are reacting to Why You Would Survive the Real Organ Trail. So we're going to react to this and on all kinds of stuff. Maybe we got some stuff that no one even knows about. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to react to this, all that good stuff. I will have the video and the channel link down below in the description. If you guys want to check it out, you guys can. So, I think with that being said, we are going to go ahead and jump right into this. We'll go ahead and like the video, the full screen of the video, and then... It's a video okay. sponsored by Incogni. <laughs> oh boy, looks like the witch got you again. This time, you gracefully land in Independence, Missouri in the mid-1800s. Everyone's packing up and moving out west to seek their fortune in greener pastures. Okay. And you don't want to get left behind. Think you have what it takes to blaze the trail? Let's find out. Yeah, let's find out. Since you've just been thrown into this reality, you're only as good as the skills that you can provide. As we all know, there's only three kinds of people in this world. Bankers, farmers, and carpenters. Nothing else. And thanks to good old democracy, you are now... Ah! A crafty carpenter. You enjoy getting hammered and occasionally nailed. You've got some solid survival <laughs> stats and decent savings. Good all right, choice. Alright, right, so let's see. Plus 50 crafting, plus 25 GOT, plus 70. <laughs> I hate the day of call it too many fucking times. Yeah, my kid, like, I'm not even gonna try to fucking pronounce that right now. 10 focus and 15 speed plus $800. So, let's see what we can do with Not this. that it was yours anyway. Here's your complimentary wife and two adorable little cherubs to help you on the trail. Look how cute they are. Your mission is to travel down the soon-to-be-famous oh, wow. Oregon Trail. Over 2,000 miserable miles of dirt, disease, and death, formally established in 1836 to help pioneers move out west. But why would- But why would I move out west, you might ask? <laughs> because you want to. But more importantly, the U.S. <laughs> government wants you to. Look, the eastern states are getting all congested, industrial, and smoggy. So the United States needs to do some good old expansion. Thanks to the Louisiana Purchase in 1803 and the Oregon Treaty in 1846, there's a lot of fresh open land to settle. Why live in the economic decline of disgusting cities in the East when you could manifest that destiny and fill up those lungs with fresh air on the fertile plains? <gasps> That's good air. If the opportunity of prosperity wasn't enough to convince you, how does free land sound? Thanks to the Oregon Land Donation Claim Act of 1850, pioneers can claim up to 640 acres, 2.6 square kilometers, of land completely free. Time to get supplies. Damn. That's fun. We are going to go over common pieces of career advice that job seekers get. Start Look, off. if you're going to be slogging down a few thousand miles of rocky trail, you're going to need to be well supplied if you want to stand any chance of surviving. True. Pioneers stocked up their supplies in trailhead towns just like Independence, Missouri. Things like food, clothes, tools, livestock, and perhaps the most critical American asset, guns. Because when you're out on a seemingly <laughs> endless sand ocean, anything's fair game. What's to stop a desperate thief from stealing your precious supplies and or daughter? Your gun. So be sure that you're well equipped to donate a few lead slugs to their cause. And of course, you could also hunt for food if you need to. When it came to food, a family of four would need about a thousand pounds of the stuff. This was usually beans, rice, flour, sugar, coffee, and dried meats and veggies. <coughs> Don't forget your pots and pans and your fresh water barrel, or else you'll be washing down your salty deer jerky with a cup of dried rice. For tools, you're gonna need to be making repairs when stuff breaks, True. and stuff will break. Stuff will Since you're a carpenter and know how to carpent properly, you're set with a hammer, a saw, and an ax. And of course, you'll need some spare clothes, otherwise you'll be walking around with some breezy cheeks. In order to haul all of your stuff down the trail, yeah. you're gonna need a big ol' wagon. This sucker right here is a prairie schooner. Not as beefy as the heavy Conestoga wagons used for shipping freight, but you can still fit so many supplies and family members in this bad boy. With four ox power, tricked out wooden wheels, and a non-existent suspension, the kids will be uncomfortably wobbling down a trail at a spine-shattering 15 miles per day. You and your wife, however, will be getting your steps in the entire way. Every day is leg day on the Oregon Trail. So with a modest $800 to your name, you talk to the general store owner and play- At least you know, no one's skipping leg day, right? Ain't no one skipped out on leg day. I mean, minus the- you know what I mean? The few that were in the in the wagons and stuff. You know what I mean? 
But I mean, I'm sure occasionally they they would like probably uh, like swap like you know what I mean one week or one day or some shit like that. They would like swap out, and then those people riding the wagon, and the people that was riding the wagon would probably do the walking. Maybe, maybe I could be wrong. Don't quote me. I could be wrong. Place your order. Yes, sir. What can I do you for? Well, about 20 bucks, but I'm kind of looking for some supplies. Sure thing. Take a look around. Yeah, can I get, uh... What's a sponsor? <laughs> that. Are you sick and tired of getting no. stupid spam emails or marketing calls from companies you've never done business with? I hate you. I know that in order to make these videos, <laughs> I've had to navigate quite a few websites for, you know, research purposes, yeah. only to get bombarded by spam calls afterward. Evil scumbag data brokers yoink your personal information and sell it to companies to make a quick buck. Important stuff like your email address, your home address, your shopping habits, even your legal name. Don't look at that. But you can fix that. The truth is we all have a legal right to politely request that these companies remove our information, but that requires a lot of paperwork, which can take years literal years. That's where Incogni comes in to scrub all of your personal details off the internet. Their legal team forces these companies to delete your personal information from their servers. When I signed up, Incogni showed me just how many companies have been profiting off of my identity. <laughs> nice. Oh wait, that's not nice. Within the first day, Incogni had sent out 127 requests to have my data removed, with 71 already being completed. Damn. Now my phone is back to being completely silent, returning me to my void of unending loneliness. Thanks, Incogni. So if that sounds like a good deal, I've got an even better one. You can support the channel by signing up today using code CHATHISTORY at incogni.com forward slash chathistory to save 60% on your Incogni annual plan. Okay. Say it with me. Incogni.com forward slash chat history. Promo code chat history. Save 60%. I love you. So can I just get one of everything? Yeah, Is I'll ring you up. Let's say I'm working on a research paper yeah. about the future of Let renewable of energy. Can I come across a study with findings I want to... You better get used to that wagon, because you're about to spend about mm, six months in it. You've got almost 2,200 miles of trail ahead of you, but you're not alone. In fact, over 400,000 other pioneers are also making the trek. Just don't make too many friends, because you'll end up burying some of them along the way. About 10% of those who hit the trail ended up really hitting the trail. For better survival stats, many families opted to form traveling caravan groups consisting of dozens of wagons to support each other. But having so many people around inevitably led to disagreement. Hey, can you pass the beans? Uh, I don't know, can I? The fuck's your problem? So in order to avoid uh, descending into complete hey. chaos, leaders and officers were elected to direct what? the caravans, laying out agreed upon ground uh, rules, what? dictating what to do in certain events. So if no. grandma slips and takes a wheel or 50 to the spine, we all know who gets all of her stuff. Enjoy those dentures. Proper planning gave you those. These concrete rules were designed to prevent arguments down the line. But of course, humans will be humans. <laughs> I just wanted some beans. But you're a simple fella who makes simple decisions. So you're probably fine, right? What could go wrong? Being on the road for about a month now, you've passed through a few okay. forts and landmarks, okay. and besides a few snakes bad. and your son hucking some stuff off of the wagon for fun, things have been going pretty well. Huh, well, time to put the carpenter skills to use and make repairs. While there's some downtime, the family has an opportunity to catch up on some chores. Just remember to keep your guard up and avoid any, you know. Since your wagon conveniently broke down next yeah, to a freshwater go. spring, your wife is able to replenish the water supply before washing the farts out of your family's clothes. Meanwhile, your daughter feeds the oxen and your son laps up water from a brown puddle. Look at him go. Oh wait, that's not good. Your son is gonna quickly learn about a little thing called cholera. You see, there were plenty of diseases that plagued the dusty trail like mumps, measles, and the dreaded dysentery, but cholera was by far the worst. Contracted mainly from contaminated water sources where fellow pioneers expelled their evils, cholera could kill within hours and spread just as fast across an entire caravan. Symptoms ah. included extreme nausea, vomiting out your front, vomiting out your back, dehydration from all the vomiting, leg cramps, restlessness, irregular heartbeat, glassy eyes, and perhaps the worst symptom of all, death. Oh my God, he's dead. No, no, he could just have cholera. Disease alone was the biggest killer on the trail with estimates of over 30,000 deaths. 
So, best to avoid slurping down brown puddles. Sorry, son. Not only were diseases a guaranteed add to the death count, but so were injuries. Even something as simple as a small cut could easily be infected. With the extent of medical treatment being no more than, eh, put some whiskey on it. Your prognosis wasn't too promising. So when little Jimothy falls off the wagon and shatters both tibias, he's now the trail's newest speed bump. If you were afflicted by something, the nice. best you could do was rest. Resting was crucial for pioneers. If they didn't stop to rest frequently, they ended up taking a dirt nap from crippling exhaustion. But not only was physical health Damn. a concern, but mental health as well. Yeah. There were quite a few reports of people throwing themselves off the wagon of life when their mental health deteriorated from not only the monotonous and seemingly unending voyage, but seeing the constant line of rotting bodies of fallen pioneers. It was pretty common to pass several dead travelers every day on the trail, so you gotta think that that's pretty demoralizing, especially if some of those travelers were your friends and family. Even today, some of these graves still mark the end of many pioneers' journeys. Mental health really was no joke. Take for example the famous story of Elizabeth Markham, who was pushed to the brink of insanity while on the trail. In the middle of their trek, she hit a point of exhaustion where she simply refused to travel any further, and nothing could convince her to carry on. After hours of failed encouragement, her husband and children were forced to abandon her and move on. After a while, her son was sent back to get her after she had rested. Bad move. Elizabeth eventually caught back up with the rest of the family, but left her son in the dirt with a rock lodged in his skull. When her husband raced back to find his son still barely alive, Elizabeth set fire to the family's wagon for good measure. Can't continue down the trail if everything you own is reduced to a cinder, can you? Not only were humans a danger to themselves, but so was almost everything else, especially nature. High winds, strong storms, blazing heat, freezing nights, they all did what they do best. They happened. You also had to watch out for wildlife, wolves, bears, yeah. snakes, coyotes, and buffalo. They were all out to get you and your family. Yeah. But thanks to firearms, humans were able to get them back, especially the buffalo. That's gonna piss off some Native Americans. Speaking of which, there's often a misconception that Native Americans were a constant threat. Not true. In fact, quite the opposite. Native outposts were extremely useful trading sites to replenish food and other supplies. Natives also served as experienced tour guides, escorting some pioneers through rougher terrain like forests and rivers. Granted, there were a few deadly altercations between pioneers and natives, usually a result of pioneers being paranoid and shooting at natives unprovoked. About 800 natives and pioneers were killed thanks to sheer stupidity. Hey. Oh well, the wagon's repaired, so time to get back to it. Okay. You continued traveling okay. on for a few more months, See, passing by more See, forts and giant rocks, but okay. it's been pretty quiet. Wait, why is everything so quiet? Yeah, why? Oh. They're probably fine. You then break out of your reminiscing when something catches your eye in the distance. There it is! The end of the line and a ticket to a new life. Oregon City. That's in Oregon. All that's left between you and salvation is a huge freaking river. The Columbia River. You can't exactly cross it, so you're gonna need to ford it. You waterproof your wagon, but you still need a raft to hold everything. Oh, but building a sturdy enough raft is just gonna be impossible, is what a non-carpenter would say. It's river time. I think it's worth it. Damn, uh, this game sucks. Damn. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> no, I definitely really did enjoy that video as well. It was definitely a good video. Let me know what you guys thought. You know what I mean? If you guys want, check the description. <clears throat> Down below in the description, I got the video and the chink. The, 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 the channel. Ah, damn. Fucking shit. The channel and the video link are down below in the description if you guys want to check it out. Make sure you guys do. They are very good video. You know what I'm saying? Very good videos that they got. You know what I mean? The channel just does really good on their videos. Definitely check them out. So, I'll see you guys in the next one. Positivity is key. Motivation is key. Happiness is key. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys stay safe. Watch out for each other. I'll see you guys in the next one.